Having trouble passing a Madden 24? In today's video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know to become a better passer. From pre-snap to all the way to the end of the play. Break yourself, fool! So if you want to see the nine most important passing tips that you should be doing every single game, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays from today's video can once again be found in my Denver Broncos offense and Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys need more help, you can always download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. In today's game, I'm playing against what I think is one of the elite sleeper teams in Madden in the Jacksonville Jaguars. My opponent starts this game out by giving me tremendous field position. But he almost got it back since Goddard fumbled. But luckily I was there to recover. The offense I'll be using again today is once again my gun wing flex offset. You don't have to use this offense for the tips I'm going to show you guys today. But to be an effective passer, you will need an offense that can successfully attack all areas of the field against every defense. As there are nine areas of the field on any given play until you get close to the end zone. Broken down into short, intermediate, and deep routes. Then the left, right, and center of each of those depths. For this offense, I get all of that using only five plays, which all fit comfortably in my audibles. Now, if you think this isn't how you're supposed to play, that it's cheap or cheesy, just remember this quote by Bruce Lee who said, I don't fear a man who practices 10,000 kicks one time. I fear a man who practices one kick 10,000 times. Your offense and defense will be better if you look at it this way, as the point is to simplify and master your system. If you don't have an offense that can do this, I've already put out a full breakdown of this offense, so if you want to see more, I'll have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video, so stick around for that. My next tip is to always take what the defense gives gives you even if it's not passing at all as i see a lane for my running back on the first place so i take it and even though i didn't get much this still serves multiple purposes number one i am playing the situation i'm almost in scoring range already so i want to limit my mistakes and a turnover or a sack is really the only thing that can keep me from kicking a field goal in this situation and since i'm not 100 percent sure what defense my opponent likes to run yet it makes sense to pay to see the play which is basically just running a play so you can see what your opponent was in after the play to get a better idea of what he likes to run as i run the first two plays not getting much and seeing that it changes defense both times which brings me to my next tip and that is to read the defense every single play pre-snap to the best of your ability whether you're running or passing i'm not going to go over this too much in this video though as i already made an entire video dedicated to this topic called how to read and beat every defense so if you guys want to get better at this i'll once again have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video if you do know how to read a defense great but if you can't yet there are still reads that you can make like spacing reads like the fact that he has no linebackers after the defensive line level. Meaning if I get through that first wave of tacklers, there's nothing to stop me until I get to the safeties. Considering I need seven yards though, and I couldn't get three yards with the first two runs, that doesn't sound like a good bet. I can also see that he has a single high safety which everybody should know eliminates at least half of the possible coverages as cover one, cover three, and invert coverage are the only defenses that will have this look. Going back to the Bruce Lee quote from earlier, I know from experience of running this offense that when I'm on a hash mark against cover three, that this safety will cheat over towards the receiver side as he wants to limit the cover three seam on that side. So it appears to be cover one. So I switched my man beater play in the stick nod vertical and make my adjustments first man. Maybe he knows this setup because he changes his defense to a zone right away while I'm making my setup. Up. but knowing that he switched to zone at least eliminates my first read and what was the corner route as this will no longer get open against zone so i put my running back on a wheel and switch my attention to the other side and look for spacing between the zones instead from here i decide to go back to the huddle and i see that he is once again in cover three which appears to be his preference so keep track of this as it will make it a lot easier to read defenses throughout the game every player has a coverage that they believe in most and they will always go back to it more than others especially in critical situations like third down fourth down and in the red zone like we are now i still have to read the defense before the play as i really can't rely on the last play to tell me but it looks like a cover three once again the cover three is weak underneath outside the cornerbacks since they drop back post snap so I take the wheel route tight end in the flat for another easy completion to get inside the five. From here I go tempo, as I know cover three is weak underneath, so I want to keep him in it. Hurry up is a great tool in many ways, but I will use it to keep my opponent in any defense that I feel I have a huge advantage over. And he now has to make a decision to either stay in it or risk getting caught out of position if he changes the defense. And since I'm running a play with no adjustments, he doesn't even have the time to decide. Do it! 
as I hike the ball right away and get the score. On defense, my opponent is running a lot of RPOs and read options before Trevor Lawrence throws an unreal crossbody dot. What? That accuracy wasn't affected at all, and Evan Ingram almost took it to the house. And my opponent is now running hurry up too, but he is not doing it in a way that he will see any benefits since I'm matching his personnel with two receivers or two cornerbacks. Now essentially in the red zone, he continues to hurry up, and I make the tough decision to switch defenses. God damn it! And it results in me giving up a touchdown since I couldn't finish the setup. But at least you can see how effective hurry up is in these situations. Back on offense, my next tip is to always leave yourself a check down. On this play, I read cover two, and since I am on the hash mark once again, I set up a one play touchdown to the tight end. But if it's not there, I at least give myself a check down to the running back with an out route. I take a shot, but I probably threw it a little bit too early as we don't get the catch, bringing up a third down. And just because I need 10 doesn't mean I have to throw the ball past the 10 yard marker, as I still have to take what the defense gives me on a 5 yard drag that is wide open for a catch and run for the first. I have some accuracy issues on the next two plays to get to 4th and 5 that I feel I have to go for. What the hell is that? When I come out of the huddle I see that he's in a single high safety look once again. And since I'm on the hash mark I know he's in cover 3 this time since the safety is cheating over to the receiver side like I said earlier. So even though this is a critical 4th down for my territory I'm still going to take what the defense gives me by setting up a 1 play touchdown when they will get open up this giant space. And even though I'm confident this is going to work I'm still going to give myself a check down for a chance at the first if it's not there. Which brings me to my next tip post snap reads. When I hike the ball it turns out to be a cover 1. Oh. And I see right away that everything is covered but man coverage also also clears everyone out leaving a lot of space to run for the quarterback. Don't just make reads and stick to them. Read before the snap and after to make sure the reads are the same before you pull the trigger. I see a single high safety in the next play and since I'm having issues reading his defense I decide to motion across a receiver just to see if anyone follows as you always have this tool at your disposal to try to expose the coverage. Since no one follows I know it's a cover 3 zone so I take the running back underneath once again for another first down. He is playing very aggressive coverage and pressing his entire secondary making it very hard to read the defense as you use to go by the cornerback's pre-snap depth. So if you find yourself throwing a lot of interceptions in these situations, I find the best thing to do is come up with a planned pre-snap for an easier decision after the play starts. I see spacing outside the corner route, so I motion across the tight end and put him on a streak to pull back any deep coverage in that area. I also put the X route on a smoke route to pull down the cornerback, and now these two routes on the read. If the corner route gets open above this cornerback, he's the play. If the cornerback drops back, the smoke is the play. Doing this before the play removes any decisions and the possibility of making any mistakes as we get another easy first down. On the next play he runs man again and that means no one is watching Jalen Hurts as we run it to get inside the five before doing it again on the next play to end the half. My opponent decides to become a runner to start the second half but you can't do this forever. As I said earlier you have to stay balanced and constantly threaten all areas of the field or your opponent will likely key in on an area of the field and defend it better. <laughs> Your ass down. Timing is everything, as my opponent switches it up to a play action pass, and if he would have thrown it right there, he would have had a big play. But he either saw it too late or didn't make a planned pre snap because he waits for more separation, gotcha, bitch. allowing the pressure to get in and force a bad actually throw that is intercepted. You should be able to run your offense with your eyes closed, and if he would have made that pre snap read, he would still have the ball. Back on offense, now I just have to put it all together. He comes out in a cover zero on the next play with no safety help, so this is the perfect time to take a shot on first down. Nope. And even though I didn't connect, he knows that he has to cover the entire field. As I'm not just killing the clock here, I am always a threat to score. Since he is dropping everyone back into coverage, I'm going to take what the defense gives me one more time. So instead of forcing a throw, I take off with my quarterback once again. I miss a wide open receiver on the sideline to get into a fourth and long before he comes out in another cover zero. So I switch back to the stick nod vertical and take what the defense gives me one more time to a wide open receiver outside. <laughs> From here I read cover 2 which is a defense that's weak up the middle since the safeties drop back so I run the ball to keep balance and continue to threaten all areas of the field. I haven't hit the running back in a while so he isn't even watching it when I hit the wheel route once again to get inside the 5 before hurrying him up and planning to do it again. But that brings me to my last tip which is really just part of reading the defense and that is read the user. As he immediately jumps the linebacker out so you can watch that running back. So since it's first down I will play the situation and eliminate that read entirely. <laughs> as it's not worth the risk, so I take the drag right across his face instead. On defense, my opponent is in panic mode now as he converts a big play on a fourth and long to keep the game alive, before eventually getting down to the one and pulling within a score with a few minutes left in the game before going for another premature onside kick. No, sir, for you. As I run the clock to zero, play keep away, and we finally settle for a field goal to put this game out of reach. 
And this game ends on a desperate interception. Gotcha, so that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see more Woo! videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you guys want to see more about the offense that I was using in today's video or want to improve your ability to read and beat defenses, I will have those links popping up on screen now. So just click links as I'm sure to help with your game. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. Much shit out. If you just want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.